Breathtaking. Thank you so much again to Yo-Yo Ma for sharing his brilliant and beautiful music with us tonight and for his words. To say that our work is an improvisation, I'd never thought of it before like that, but we certainly do work with our heads and our hearts. And we too hope that our work can go on forever and make the world better so that we all, as Yo-Yo Ma said, can survive and thrive. What a gift, what a gift he gave to the Lown family, to Bernard Lown, and to us tonight. So pulling together all the threads that we've heard tonight, as Dr. Denai said, Dr. Lown was a superlative clinician, modeling compassion and warmth at the bedside that made him revered by his patients. But he carried the same commitment and caring into his advocacy work. He said, I didn't view myself other than as a doctor who's trying to heal a sick planet. I'd also like to underscore Dr. Lamb's moral courage. He spoke out and took action on some of the most controversial issues of his day, racism in medicine. According to his close friend, Bruce Price, who recently wrote to me, he was briefly expelled from the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine in the 1940s for switching black blood for white. Who knew that that was a thing? The corporate, he spoke out against the corporatization of medicine that was driving the overdiagnosis and over treatment of myriad conditions and the need for medical treatment and the ac universal access to health insurance and to medical knowledge. He formed many groups as well as his own foundation to address these issues. But a signal issue for Dr. Lown was nuclear weapons development and the nuclear arms race which he considered an urgent public health matter and a threat to human existence. Dr. Lown's success in his advocating on these issues as shown in the scene where a number of doctors are resuscitating a journalist is not a singular accomplishment. It was by working alongside many other groups around the world that a comprehensive nuclear weapons test ban treaty was approved. Uh, and that the number of nuclear weapons dropped from 60,000 in 1980 to under 14,000 today, although many thousands are on hair trigger alert. And around the bedside and around the world, it takes a team. And what we hope we've done tonight is to emphasize that we do nothing on our own. In a way, our musical program reflects that. We move from a quartet to the singular voice of Yo-Yo Ma and finish with a symphony in the resuscitation of our planet from the effects of climate change and the eternal effects, past and future of nuclear weapons, all of our voices are needed. Seconding that, perhaps the greatest gift Dr. Lown and his colleagues achieved when they wrote the first series of articles about the genocidal health impacts of nuclear war in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1962 was to give physicians and health professionals a voice. They understood that voicing concerns publicly about matters of human health did not come easily to the medical profession, but they encouraged colleagues nonetheless to speak out. We gather here tonight to honor Dr. Lown's accomplishments and to see them live on in our own work and that of the groups that grew out of the ones he helped to found, PSR and IPBNW. I remember the one time I met Dr. Lown in his clinic in Boston, and we took, he took me into the conference room and showed me his most wonderful invention, the defibrillator. As he explained to me the experiments that he'd done early on so they could figure out whether AC or DC was gonna be the right kind of current, I felt that I was being drawn in to this wonderful story of saving human beings from sudden cardiac death. And as he did so, he included me in the legacy he had of saving humanity from sudden nuclear death. And I feel so very grateful that at that time, as a junior doctor, just two years out of medical school, he encouraged me so much. I think of the accomplishments we have as activists and campaigners and as leaders in this space, where we stand on the shoulders of giants. And I'm so grateful that I had the encouragement on that day from Dr. Lown, who said to me generously, well, I think your only fault is that you wish to be a neurosurgeon and not a cardiologist. 
So we see the way in which his work connects with decades of advocacy from the Hibaksha and many indigenous peoples in whose land and waters nuclear weapons were tested with multitudes of campaigners and activists around the world. And as we celebrate our own connections to this wonderful man, may we be encouraged and strengthened for the future, for the tasks at hand, for the work to be done, meeting the climate crisis and eliminating nuclear weapons. The best way to honor him is to honor his work and indeed honor our work together. I'd really like to invite you to please check our websites for suggestions about how you can get involved and make a difference. And I'd like to remind you about the exciting uh, GBPSR CME event on October 4th entitled Nuclear Weapons, a Public Health Issue, which we're giving in collaboration with the Massachusetts Medical Society, but which is open to everyone all around the world and free to register. And it's my particular honor to invite you to a special high level meeting on Thursday, September 30th. We'll have the Under Secretary General for the, of the United Nations, the President of the International Committee of the Red Cross, and the President of Rotary International, together discussing eliminating the existential threat of nuclear weapons. Please register for this free event, which I'm honored to host. This Sunday, and I know that for many viewing this, uh, it's already Sunday where you are, so hello to you. We know that for you, it's already the International Day for the total elimination of nuclear weapons. And as we inch closer to our goal, we can see on the horizon that this is Dr. Lowndes' legacy and indeed all of our legacy playing out. That brings us to the end of our program. I'd like to close by again thanking the Lowndes family, our honorary committee, our planning committee, and most especially IPPNW's Molly McGinty and GBPSR's executive director, Anna Baker, who have worked tirelessly pulling this program together for the past many, many months. A huge thanks to our speakers and our sponsors, the legislators, individuals, medical and other institutions who stepped forward to make this evening possible. And of course, our heartfelt thanks to Yo-Yo Ma and the LSO for providing this music for healing, music that illuminates our message. There's still an opportunity to donate to this event. If you haven't already, please use the link you see at the bottom of the screen. And please enjoy our finale, a truly phenomenal performance of Haydn's very beautiful Symphony Number no. 95 in C minor. Thank you all again for joining us this evening and good night. <laughs>